The SOE Museum opposite Palace House tells the story of Bewley's involvement with the Special Operations Executive, which was an organisation that recruited and trained volunteers to support local resistance groups in a Nazi-occupied Europe during the Second World War. Now, Bewley was the always called the finishing school for agents because once they'd completed their initial training in other parts of the British Isles, many of them were brought here to the Bewley estate to hone and practice their skills they had learned prior to being taken to holding stations before being parachuted into occupied Europe. Now, because Bewley had a specific role in the training of these agents, our museum quite rightly concentrates only on that aspect of SOE work. It does not go on to talk about what the agents did when they left Bewley, i.e. what the, the work they did in occupied Europe and how they put their training into use. And what I've always wanted to do ever since this museum opened was to try and add part of that story to give visitors an idea of, of exactly what they did with all that training when they got into Europe. So last year, I completed a new display in the SOE Museum telling exactly that story through the example of two agents who worked in France. The two agents I chose were a man, Francis Suttle, who became the head of the biggest SOE network in France, and France was the main theatre of operations for SOE, and a woman, Yvonne Rudela, who was initially his courier, which is like a liaison officer, and who later became the head of a subsection of his network in her own right. Now, both of these people were trained at Bewley in the summer of 1942. They may have met here, they may not, we just don't know. But what we do know is that later the same year, they were both sent to the same area of France to work in the same network, and they worked very successfully together. Their fates were also linked because they were unfortunately captured within days of each other as a result of the same sequence of events which you can read about on the storyboard. Last year when I did this exhibition it was the 80th anniversary of the capture of both of these agents so in part the display is also intended as a memorial to them and to all of the Bewley trained SOE agents who didn't return after the war. We're very fortunate to have had the loan of the medals of both agents posthumously awarded and you can read the citations that accompany them below. And then the main storyboard here tells the story of both agents, Francis Suttle on the left, Yvonne Rudela on the right, from their early lives until their deaths in concentration camps in Germany and in the middle, their interlinked story is of the work they did in occupied France, information collecting, work with the resistance sabotage. I worked in close liaison with the families of the two agents who provided me with a lot of personal information and some fa fabulous uh, family photos which had never been seen in public before. We we're also lucky to have some of the few surviving artefacts linked to both agents. In the case of Yvonne Rudela, the only three surviving effects of hers which were passed down to her granddaughter, the most moving of which I think is this book which she bought and inscribed for herself on the day that she was accepted to be an agent in France. In the case of Francis Suttle, we have this rare survival of a cell, a canister which contained arms, which was one of many sent in a drop to Francis Suttle's resistance group. Because we have the serial number on the outside, we are able to know exactly what weapons it contained and precisely which field it was dropped into and on what date. And we also, of course, as a result, know that the coded BBC message that was transmitted from London to Francis Suttle's agents to tell them exactly when to expect the drop. Finally, I produced two brief films on one on each agent to try to convey to visitors the personalities of the two people. It's very difficult to do because of course there's no recordings of them or moving footage. So what I did with Yvonne Rudela was I based her personality story 
on a memoir written after the war by a woman who before the war was a schoolgirl lodger with Yvonne in London and she paints an extremely vivid picture of an independent, fun-loving woman, very quirky. She was a vegetarian and a Buddhist, very unusual at that time. She was also the oldest female agent to be sent into occupied France. She was 45 when she went there. For Frances Suttle's personality profile, I use an even more unusual group of materials, and that's his own letters from the field to his wife at home in England. Uh, a lot of people don't know that there was actually a mail system between agents in occupied Europe and their families, and this was taken by a plane that landed in a field in France in the middle of the night and brought mail back from England and took mail home again. So again, you get a very, very good idea of what he was going through in France. Obviously, he couldn't tell her where he was or, or too much about what he was doing, but it, it, it hugely shows his personality coming through these letters. We've had a lot of interest from members of the public for this new display, also from visits from specialist SOE experts and the descendants of other Beaulieu trained agents. And I'm hoping that this display will mark the start of a, a redesign and revamp of the whole museum, which is now 15 years old. We want to add more colour, more photographs, tell more stories. And we've also very kindly been given a number of new artefacts by private individuals, which we would like to display. So, and I hope all that work will start next year. So watch this space.